So we begin with the Half-Life games. I have Half-Life 1 here, but I'm generally speaking about the whole uh, Half-Life collection. Somebody asked me a couple of days ago to give them a sequence of Half-Life games. And I think I'm in a good position because about seven, eight years ago, when I first started YouTube, I literally bought the Half-Life complete pack and started my YouTube channel with the let's play of all the Half-Life games. If you go to the other channel and go back to the oldest videos, you'll see that's how I started. So basically, if you are going to start playing Half-Life, uh, you can simply pick up the Half-Life Complete Pack. It is 90% off, excellent price. Now, the way the bundle works is they've included everything made by Valve here. Previously, there used to be a complete Half-Life bundle and then a complete uh, Valve bundle, but I think they have removed the Half-Life bundle. You get, the, uh, you get all the games made by Valve. You can also buy the orange box, but I'll explain to you what you need because there are quite a few Half-Life games. So, first one, Half-Life. Then after this, there was an expansion called Opposing Force, Half-Life Opposing Force. Uh, where is it? This one here. So this is the first game, main game, Half-Life. Opposing Force was the first expansion. Blue Shift was the second expansion. So this is the first Half-Life games. Now they also have a Half-Life Source version. So basically different engine. And you can play both of them. They look slightly different, but basically the same game. Now, then we move on to Half-Life 2. So this is the main game, Half-Life 2. Original game came out in 98. Half-Life 2 came out in 2004. Then we have Half-Life Episode 1. And then we have Episode 2. And that's it. And no more Half-Life. No more Half-Life 3. No more Episode 3. That was the end of Half-Life. So if you are planning to get them, this is the sequence. Still pretty fun. Of course, the first games will feel a bit dated. I, I made this Let's Play early 2017 and even then of course it felt dated because it was almost 20 years old back then and now another 7 years later it might feel a little dated but if you don't mind all the graphics it still plays well uh, the enemy AI is pretty good so yeah definitely play this and then Half-Life 2 in my opinion still looks amazing graphically even now 20 years later so you can see here it still looks pretty good so this is my first recommendation I think you should definitely play the Half-Life games if you like FPS games, if you like interesting stories. And of course, it's also part of gaming history at this point. Next is Darkest Dungeon. So I decided to pick something different. This is one of those games that I was addicted to a while ago. I still occasionally I install it and play a little bit. But for me, this is like the closest thing to chess in this video game format. Very brutal, very difficult unforgiving all of those things and it's just also very enjoyable if you can get the hang of it so the way this game works is you have uh, four heroes and you go, your heroes go down into a dungeon now unlike other games where you have health you defeat enemies then you take a potion heal yourself in this game you also have to manage the stress that you endure when you go into these deep dark scary dungeons and fight these enemies so some people are very scared and they'll get stressed out easily. Some are braver and so on. So there are a few gameplay mechanics like having a torch which keeps the light up so everything is brighter so they're less scared and less stressed so on and so forth. So you, you're basically in a hamlet. You have a selection of heroes each with different abilities and moves and you have to form a team of four and deal with the different dungeons. And there are like four major dungeons, dungeon types I should say and different types of enemies and you have to manage and clear everything now the game is difficult because the enemies are brutal and you also have permadeath so you could have a character you level them up and when you go and take them into the dungeon they could die and if they die they're dead permanently you might have spent a lot of time leveling them up leveling their gear and everything so this is why the game is so brutal but at the same time also very satisfying so this is currently on a great sale. You can pick it up 85% usual price. I think it has gone down once, like 90 or something. You can get the base game here. And then uh, there are a few free DLCs. The Butcher Circus is basically a PvP mode. I've never really played it. The Musketeer is another hero. And then there's a Shield Breaker, another hero. So at the start, you just need to buy the Shield Breaker. Again, you don't need to, but if you want all the heroes, you can buy it. The shield breaker 
and then the crimson coat and color of madness these are two further areas you don't need them at the start but you can pick them up the ancestral version is like the complete version which has everything so you could uh, pick that up as well next is the middle earth shadow of war game so i won't go into too much detail because i've mentioned them at least a couple of times i think in the previous videos but these are basically games set in the lord of the rings universe you are a ranger who has some special abilities because an ancient elf ghost is basically attached to him, one of the ring makers. That gives you special powers and it's all about the gameplay with this one. Moves are fun, action is interesting, the enemy AI is excellent, the famous nemesis system here. So it just makes it very interesting. The second game also has some fortresses that you have to conquer so that becomes a mini game in itself. So very very enjoyable game. Excellent third person action adventure game. It is open world, but I would still consider it a more of an action game. And what I would recommend is if you have not played the Middle Earth games, there are two games, just get this Shadow Bundle, which is both the games and all the DLCs. All of it together, $7, insane price. These were AAA games. The second game, I even made a video ranting about it when it launched for $100. The go this was the gold edition was a hundred dollars in 2017 i have a couple of videos of me ranting about it so you can imagine like how much cheaper this is now quite a big game as well i think it's a 96 gb download on your disc but well worth it one of the best value games here next is far cry 3 and this is sort of in the era where i was returning to gaming so in the 2000s i was like a normal guy I had just finished college, education, I was busy working, trying to, you know, do stuff in life. So I wasn't really gaming much, but towards the end of the decade in 2010, 2011, I built a new PC and I wanted to start gaming again. And this is one of the games that I remember fondly. So we had the Assassin's Creed games and some of the other games, and then this popped up. I had no idea what this was. I had vaguely played, vaguely remembered playing the first Far Cry game I remember back in 2004 or something when it came out I couldn't even run it on my old PC back then so when this Far Cry 3 came out I wasn't too sure what it was but when I played it I was very impressed the art style was a bit more cel shaded wasn't as realistic and this whole jungle environment the driving the climbing the towers all those things wonderful and they had a crazy villain here as well the only thing I did not like was the protagonist and his friends apart from that everything else was fantastic so this one is back to a more reasonable price um, they had increased the price for whatever reason in india but now it's more sensible so this is three dollars 150 in india great game amazing open world you'll get plenty of content like 40 50 hours if you want uh, i've played this multiple times over the years next is great so this is a bit of an unusual recommendation this is not something that would appeal to everyone but for me this worked out very well i was kind of sick when this game came out it looked interesting the setting was different to a lot of the other usual games that we get in rpgs so normally you get the medieval rpg medieval fantasy stuff or you get sci-fi stuff futuristic stuff this was in a more of a new world setting which was not as commonly explored so that appealed to me and this was also you could say a diplomacy simulator where while you can fight and do stuff, you can also be very diplomatic with all the tribes and different factions within the game. So I think besides The Witcher 3, the quest in this game seemed the most interesting to me. Like they were well thought out, fleshed out, and every quest had a connection to the main story. So that is something I really enjoyed in this game. I think I know liked it for a week when it came out. And it took me around 40 hours, 39, 38 hours, something to finish the whole thing. And the only thing I missed out was like one side quest, which was like a big quest where you had to map out the whole thing. Apart from that, I had done everything. And I was very satisfied the way the game played because it felt different to me. So the base game here is 80%, $7, three nineteen in India, 6 in the UK. Next is Frostpunk. So another game I've mentioned a few times recently one of my favorite city builders in fact this is kind of a new genre to me this is not just a city builder this is a survival city builder and the survival element is quite brutal so this game is set in an alternate uh, Victorian era the whole world is freezing over 
and the gameplay involves you and your last colony of survivors going to this sort of crater where they have these uh, coal fed generators in the middle and you have to establish your city around it so you have to keep this thing running at all times and then you have a few people and you have to send them to do different things uh, collecting coal obviously wood other materials then you need some people to manage the hospitals and grow food and things like that and also um, the weather gets worse it gets colder and so you have to build proper shelters better insulation you also need to have some people as uh, trained as engineers so they can also improve the efficiency of the generator and things like that. of course you have to keep the people's needs uh, met as well like satisfy whatever they want otherwise they might revolt so all of that makes it a very challenging game and something that's not easy to get a uh, hold of so this is why the game is challenging also has multiple scenarios they even have a scenario called the last autumn so this is before the freezing thing happened and when people were setting up the generator initially so before the events of the main game but i love the main game quite a lot very challenging very difficult and even though i have finished it it's never easy to you know complete it without a lot of casualties or something so that's the challenge here and currently on a new low so 90 percent off three dollars 130 in india 249 so yeah if you have any interest have a look at this next is yet another zombie survivor so a bit more recent and came out last year and still in early access i think it's made by one developer but i found it very enjoyable so you may have heard of empire survivors very popular last year or a couple of years ago and there are a lot of uh, clones of that game this is one of them and this is my favorite of the clones so basically here what you have is three um you could say specialists heroes whatever and you just have hordes and hordes of zombies attacking you the heroes have their own speciality so there's an engineer there's a SWAT guy there's a uh, guy who has you know tank abilities basically and each of them have perks and other abilities to help thin out the herd and as time goes on more and more zombies harder enemies they keep piling up on you and you have to survive 20 minutes they have added multiple maps now it's up to three maps and i think seven heroes so you can have up to three at a time they sort of all stick together and uh, fight like that and it just gets insanely chaotic towards the end trying to survive the 20 minutes um, it's not as hard to be fair once you unlock some abilities and upgrade the characters but it's quite fast paced and uh, very enjoyable at least to me i have put in quite a few hours and i recommend this game highly so this is 25 percent off 749 dollars 360 in india 637 in the uk 974 in canada these games are usually around the 10 dollar mark 